Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at the biggest ongoing heist. Yes, there's been a heist going on since August 15th, 1971. That's how we're going to look at uh, the closing of the gold window today. Uh, before I do, just like to uh, give you an update on Rudy. There he is. He's... Uh, uh, well, he didn't want to lie on the sofa. Uh, we've been for a walk already. He's had his breakfast. And uh, yes, he's doing well. He's just over four months now. So, we've been hearing a, a lot about China, Russia, the BRICS countries starting to deal in their own currencies uh, with each other. Uh, big, big news last week was Brazil and China announcing that uh, they're going to use their own currencies to deal with each other. And uh, we, we get a lot of uh, disparaging comments, even from people who are supposed to be alternative. So here we have Keith Weiner saying, this is what it sounds like when you say they're setting up their own currency. The difference between uh, the difference that being that Portuguese, Hindi, Mandarin, and Russian are perfectly good languages. And then you have George Gammon, breaking news. The BRICS countries are now setting up their own language to compete with English for global dominance. Obviously, this is the end of English hegemony. Billions of people are now avoiding English and learning Mandarin. So <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised of their ignorance about what's been going on since 1971. So I don't think the BRICS countries want to have their own currency. They just want to um, have their own bank accounts and not have to keep an account with Uncle Sam because that's what's been going on since the end of World War II. And it got worse, of course, after August 15, uh, 1971. And we're going to come to that in a second. So let me ask you, Keith Weiner, Weiner and George Gammon, your bank account, is it with someone else? Does someone uh, keep control of your bank account at whatever bank you have? I don't think so. So uh, why, why should uh, every country around the world keep a, a bank account to deal with, you know, with the United States? If they want to deal with different countries, they shouldn't have to. So you guys don't understand what's going on. Yes, people are going to keep uh, I owe you nothing's dollars, of course, <laughs> to deal with the United States. And yes, it was John Exter who said the dollar uh, is now an I owe you nothing's. Well, that was after August 15, 1971, when, uh, well, basically it was a default. The U.S. defaulted, but... The uh, the term used legally, of course, was that they were suspending the uh, convertibility of the United States currency for gold temporarily. That's right. So what I'm trying to say here, no one is trying to uh, usurp the U.S. dollar or the English language. Uh, they're just trying to to be independent and sovereign and uh for you know so that brazil doesn't have to accumulate dollars to deal with china it doesn't make any sense uh, would the united states uh, like to uh, have to like it if they had to accumulate euros to buy something from australia you know that's the same thing so um <laughs> yeah that's what i have to say about that but now to the uh, the biggest ongoing heist and uh, I did a video back in uh, August 2021 stating that uh, the U.S. owes Brazil 1,292 tons of gold at $35 an ounce. And you might say, wow, gold is at almost $2,000. Well, uh, bear with me for a second because we're going to look at a very interesting article that I spoke about in that video. And I did some other calculations and guess how much gold... Uh, the United States owes the United Kingdom, where I am right now, at $35 an ounce. Well, 2,000 metric tons, yes. So why has there been an ongoing heist since August 15, 1971? Well, 
all the countries that had dollar reserves uh, before August 15th, 1971, those reserves became basically worth a lot less because you couldn't convert them into real money, i.e. gold. And I, I do think Keith Weiner and George Gammon know what gold is. Uh, they should uh, because that's what they, they've been pushing as well. But anyway, I highly recommend this article here uh, by Ronan Manley, and it's from August uh, 2021, so three years old. And it says, British request for three billion in U.S. Treasury gold, the trigger that closed the gold window. So here's the uh, the <laughs> the uh, statement on Sunday, August 15th, by President Nixon, who was a lawyer, of course. So he was very much aware of how they had to deal with this. He said, I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold and other reserve assets except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States and F everyone else, right? Richard Nixon, August 15th, 1971. And before we go to uh, the end of this article where uh, Ronan Manley makes a really interesting comment, uh, just wanted to go through uh, why Richard Nixon and the United States uh, basically uh, suspended uh, the convertibility of the currency into gold. Basically, the dollar became an IOU nothing. We're told that the dollar is the greatest currency out there, but it's uh, uh, just a piece of paper, an empty promise. So this part says, hello, chaps, we like three billion in gold. <laughs> So it says here in a 2016 article by Chris Barber titled The Burden of Bretton Woods, published by the Nixon Foundation, Bar Barber writes that in the second week of August 1971, the British ambassador appeared before the United States Treasury and asked that three billion be converted into gold to act as cover for all their dollar assets. It was then in the midst of of impending economic calamity that Nixon had to confront the major crisis. So I recommend you read the article, but what happened was the, the British paid them $750 million, uh, in gold, which at $35 an ounce happened to be around 660 uh, metric tons. And if you look back at uh, Gordon Brown when he sold half the UK's gold reserves, uh, it was around th just over 300 ounces. So the UK kept that amount of gold up until the late 90s. But in reality, the, the UK had 3 billion. <laughs> they, they wanted 3 billion, which was about 2.6 million, or two, sorry, 2,660 metric tons. That's what they were entitled to. So that's why I said, the UK is still entitled to that 2,000 metric tons. And why did I uh, look into Brazil? Well, a lot of you probably know that I was uh, born in Brazil in 1964. And I can remember very well the inflation in the 70s and the 80s. And I have to say, this is uh, what it's all about, this inflation, because Brazil, uh, back in August of uh, 1971, had one. 1.454 billion dollars of reserves and uh, of course the central bank of brazil uh, or the brazilian treasury at the time they weren't in the know like the british the french and the european countries were uh, about the the situation in the us because there's always a club right the developed countries and the less developed countries so if you work out the amount of dollars brazil had on august uh of 1971, it comes out to, um, yeah, uh, 1,292 uh, metric tons of gold. So Brazil would be entitled to that as well. And you kind of wonder about the uh, oil embargo in 1973 by the, by the Saudis, because the Saudis, I'm sure, had a lot of uh, dollar reserves and they got shortchanged. 
and they had to they <laughs> it's the same thing that's happening today uh, you're not going to have uh, our oil unless you're going to pay a lot more for it because you're paying now with pieces of paper, not real money. And uh, yes, and, and uh, it affected the whole world, not just Brazil, the inflation of the 70s. Uh, it it uh, affected Europe, it affected this country here because overnight our currencies lost a lot of their value because uh, basically... The United States defaulted de facto, uh, I would say. Yes, it's uh, temporary, the, uh, you know, the suspension of the convertibility. And that's why uh, I said that this, uh, this has been an ongoing heist of every nation in the world, their money. And I'm not having a go at Americans because very few people probably at the time understood what really was going on, the significance of it. But uh, 50 years later, yes, here we are. And I spoke with uh, Clive Thompson yesterday about the debt ceiling that the U.S. could default this time. <laughs> and I actually think that would probably be the best thing for the United States to default on their uh, fiat currency debt because it's really worthless. But it, it might also let them off the hook uh, in terms of uh, their debt to countries like Brazil and the United Kingdom? And do countries like Brazil and the United Kingdom have a leg to stand on to demand uh, the gold that they were owed uh, on August 15, 1971? Well, this is what uh, Mr. Manley says here, Ronan Manley, towards the end of his article. One final point to note is that while the temporary suspension of the U.S. Treasury gold window has been ongoing for over 50 years now and is a source of ridicule for the U.S. government due to the wording temporary. The last laugh is on the foreign central banks, since under international law, all their billions of U.S. dollar holdings prior to the August 15, uh, 1971 window closure, gold window closure, are still valid and legal claims against U.S. Treasury gold holdings. Think about that for a moment. So I would argue that the amount of uh, gold that the U.S. purports to have, I think 8,300 metric tons, that would be gone in uh, <laughs> very quickly at $35 an ounce. And uh, back then, the U.S. had just over 10,000 uh, metric tons in reserves. And, and I got that from uh, IMF, IMF data here, uh, the uh, IMF uh, annual report, as you can see. And Rona Manley uh, talks about how um, back in 1971, in August 1971, they were very worried and they closed the gold window because they probably didn't have enough gold to cover uh, every country's claims. I, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the British if they got the three billion and let's say Brazil got involved, that would have been like uh, three eighths of uh, all of the U.S.'s gold reserves. So, yes, uh, it was a run on the bank and they closed the bank and it's been closed ever since. And that's why I call it an on ongoing heist. I'm not having a go at the American people here. I'm having, uh, you know, a go uh, at the uh, monetary uh, authorities. Uh, in the United States, in the UK, in Brazil, they could have done something. But uh, uh, I, I guess when you're uh, facing the biggest uh, military power in the world, it's a little different. But now it, it seems to be changing. And, and the, uh, the nations and countries that are, uh, you know, stepping up to the plate are actually um, what, what, what is called the emerging market countries or the BRICS countries. And I think that's what's going on. They're not trying to uh, impose any languages on anyone. They're just trying to be sovereign, independent, and uh, not be shortchanged. That's what it's all about, uh, Keith and George. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.36 a.m. Uh, London time. We've got Spot gold trading around 1980 in terms of IOU nothings. Yes, 
uh, the so-called U.S. dollar. Uh, the high has been 1985 and the low 1976. Uh, spot silver is down seven uh, cents, trading at 23.89. The Dow futures is down 28. Nasdaq is down 27. S&P futures down three. So fairly quiet right now. Uh, to the fiat currencies, uh, we got sterling up 0.15 of a percent, 124.33. Uh, the euro is unchanged, 109.04. Uh, the dollar uh, is up a quarter of a percent versus the yen, 132.77. I, I saw a headline saying that uh, Japan, the BOJ, bought a trillion dollars worth of JGBs last year. Yes, one trillion US dollars, not Japanese yen. Crazy. Uh, a dollar is up slightly versus the U1 at 688.67. Aussie dollar is down half a percent, 67.46. Uh, the uh, dollar is uh, unchanged versus the Canadian dollar, 134.33. And the Kiwi dollar is down slightly at uh, 62.89. To the general commodities, uh, we've got platinum uh, down two bucks, trading around 988. WTI crude is up 1% at 81.26 and Brent crude is up uh, 1% as well at 85.62 and uh, talking about uh, oil let's uh, talk a little bit about OPEC and or OPEC plus they cut oil production by about 1.6 million barrels a day and yes, uh, the Americans aren't happy about it. But one thing I would say, John Connolly back in 1971 said to all the countries that were upset about this uh, suspension of convertibility, temporary suspension, he said, well, uh, the dollars are currency, but it's your problem. So I guess OPEC is OPEC plus is now saying, you know, the oil is ours. Uh, the price is your problem. So deal with it, uh, President Biden. Maybe allow Americans to produce more oil. Who knows? That would be probably a good idea. So let's uh, look at the uh, bond markets now. The I owe you nothings, <laughs> U.S. Treasury. And I'm not just having a go at U.S. Treasuries because all other currencies are I owe you nothings, right? So... The 10-year uh, yield is uh, unchanged at 3.43. The two years at uh, 3.98, unchanged as well. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.